All right, let's get into reactive extensions. So reactive extensions is a library that allows us to create asynchronous data streams via observables and subscribe to these data streams via observers. So if that's a little bit difficult to wrap your head around, then no worries because I also have this table where we can relate observables to concepts that you might already be familiar with. So an observable is similar to a task in that it's asynchronous and reactive, and it's similar to an I enumerable in that it can have multiple return values. But the big difference with observables is that it's going to push multiple return values over time to the observer as the data stream represented by the observable receives more data. Now, if this table and that explanation is also confusing, then no worries, I will admit reactive extensions has a bit of a learning curve and it can take some time to wrap your head around the asynchronous push based nature of observables. Also, the reactive extensions library is pretty big and has a lot of features. So that being said, rather than sitting here and talking about theory all day and what reactive extensions is, in this series, we're going to be demoing various use cases using reactive extensions and you'll be able to take these concepts to build your own asynchronous data streams with reactive extensions. So right here in this demo, I just have a solution that has one project, our countdown demo. This is a console app. And right now all we have is a hello world program. So we're pretty much just starting from scratch here. Now, as you might've guessed by our project name, countdown demo, we're gonna be building a countdown timer using reactive extensions. So starting off, let's install the reactive extensions library. So we're gonna to go to our project and manage NuGet packages. And we're gonna be searching for system.reactive. And we're just gonna grab this first one here. Let's install that. That is system.reactive. And that'll have everything we need for using reactive extensions in this demo. So back in our program.cs, let's get rid of this hello world. And I'm just gonna throw down a console read line here so that our app doesn't stop until we press enter. And again, building a countdown timer. So I'm just gonna have a method here called countdown. It'll take in the amount of seconds that we wanna count down from. And then inside of this method, we're gonna have all of our reactive extension stuff. And I'm just gonna call this method when our application starts. We're gonna count down from about five seconds. So getting started with reactive extensions here, again, the main idea is that we have an asynchronous data stream represented by an observable that we subscribe to via an observer. So the first part here is that we need some kind of asynchronous data stream. This could be many things. It could be a network request where we're waiting to get data back asynchronously. It could be a WebSocket where we're continuously getting data back from that WebSocket. It could even be a C-sharp event that's going to asynchronously push data to subscribers. But in this case, we're dealing with a countdown timer. So our asynchronous data stream is gonna be the concept of time. So every one second, I wanna add data to my data stream. So that is what our observable is going to represent. So let's create that observable. And starting off, we're gonna use observable. Let's import that from system.reactive.link. And our data stream, again, is time. So we're gonna use observable.timer. So I want my observable to start now. So for this first parameter, the do time, I wanna use date time offset dot UTC now. And then the second parameter, the period, so when to produce subsequent values, I want this to be every one second. So my countdown timer is going to fire every one second. So we're gonna do from seconds, just one. And before we get into customizing this observable to act like a countdown timer, let's subscribe to it right now and see how observable.timer works. So we're gonna to subscribe to this observable with our observer. So we can just represent our observer via callbacks so as we see here, we can pass in an on next callback. And this is going to be a callback that receives the data from our data stream, which is our timer. So let's pass in this on next callback and it's going to take in our data. And rather than calling this data, let's call it current seconds because that's ultimately what we want our countdown timer to represent. And let's just console right line the current seconds. And let me organize all this on the new lines. Now there is more that we can do with observers. So if I expand on the subscribe method, we can look at other parameters. So we can pass in a callback for when the observable is completed. So when there's no more data to be received in the data stream. And then we can also pass in a callback to handle any errors that are encountered by our observable. But for now, let's just handle data from our timer. So 
let's run this and let's see how this observable works. So it looks like our timer is working. So every one second, our observable pushes a new value to our subscriber and we write that out to the console. So this is actually counting up. So every one second, this increments, but we want it to count down. So we can actually pipe the data that gets emitted from this observable into pretty much anything we want. And then our observer will get the transformed value. So to transform the data from our observable, we can use select. So pretty similar to just basic link with I enumerables. Same concept, we're mapping data to a new value. So our data here is the current seconds, and that represents each of the values from our timer. So counting up from zero, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. What we wanna do is subtract that value from the seconds that we're counting down from. So if we're counting down from five, then when our timer admits that zero at first, we're gonna be starting at five. And then when our timer emits one, we're gonna be doing four. So to get that behavior, we wanna do our seconds minus the current seconds emitted by our timer. And now this should be more like a countdown. So there we go, we get five, four, three, two, one, zero. There we go, oh, but it's going negative. So what we want our countdown timer to do is stop when the seconds equals zero. So to do that, we can use take while, and we only want our observable to keep taking values from the data stream while this current seconds is greater than zero. So we can pass in a callback that represents that. We get our current seconds, which we just transformed to have the countdown behavior. And we only want to take values while the current seconds, again, is greater than zero. So now if we run this, we should stop once we hit one. So here we go, five, four, three, two, one, and we're done. So our observable data stream has completed, and now what? So what we can do with our observer is we can pass in another callback here for one completed. So that's the second parameter, one completed, and as expected, this will get fired when our observable is done. So in our case, whenever the current seconds is less than or equal to zero. So when our countdown timer is done, I'm just gonna write out blast off. And let's see how this looks. So our countdown timer should be fully functioning. Five, four, three, two, one, and blast off. There we go. Another thing I wanna show off with observables is that, again, they are asynchronous. So if we run multiple countdowns at the same time, and let's make this 10, it's not like we're gonna wait for this first countdown to finish before we start the second time. These are gonna be running together asynchronously. There we go, both timers have started and they're asynchronously pushing data. There we go, the first one finished and now just the second one is running and completed. Another thing I wanna mention, and this is more specific to just observable.timer as well as other timer-based observables like observable.interval, which we didn't get into, but these time-based observables are subject to clock drift. So for example, if right here, I also write out the date time dot now, we're gonna see that each of these times is not exactly one second apart. So let's look at this. Oh, I guess we're not really getting into it accurately enough. Let me get a more accurate format here where we can actually see milliseconds. In fact, let's just print the milliseconds. And let me also go back to just running one countdown. So let's run this. And as we see, we get 852 milliseconds, but then we get 874, 859, 856, 857. So it's not exactly 1000 milliseconds apart or one second apart. So just keep that in mind if you're doing something that's very time sensitive, and you need something to behave in one second intervals. So in the future, I do wanna build a more advanced countdown timer that's per in the clock drift, but this example was more for just wrapping our heads around reactive extensions. So what we did was we determined what our asynchronous data stream was, and we decided that was the concept of time. So we created an observable to represent our asynchronous data stream of time, and this observable receives new values every one second. And then we use link-like reactive extensions operations to transform our data and set a threshold for when we want our observable to stop. And then finally, we subscribe to our observable with an observer. So every time we get a value from our countdown timer, we write out that value, which represents the current seconds left in the countdown. 
And then when our observable is complete, we write out blast off. So hopefully this was helpful for getting into reactive extensions and understanding their push based asynchronous nature. And hopefully you can apply these concepts to build your own observables with reactive extensions. So stay tuned for more reactive extensions use cases. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.